everyone and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. The dwarf pale blue gourami, also known as the powder blue gourami, has been a welcome mainstay in the aquarium hobby for many years, and that is not surprising considering there aren't very many fish out there who can match them in terms of their incredible, beautiful, soft metallic blue sheen. And they also have the added benefit of not getting too large and being relatively easy to care for, so it's little wonder they have maintained that steady popularity. But what are powder blues like to keep and what kind of setup do they need? Well, the powder blue gourami are in fact a captive bred variant of the standard dwarf gourami, which just means they have been selectively bred in order to increase the amount of blue coloration that they're showing. The original dwarf gourami hail from India and Pakistan, where they inhabit slow, often very heavily vegetated, but poorly oxygenated waters around the edges of ponds and ditches. And in all honesty, I have found powder blue gouramis to be a little bit on the temperamental side when it comes to their habitat. And if I was to compare them to the other gourami cousins, then they're more like sparkling gourami rather than a honey gourami, in that powder blues know what they like and they can struggle to adapt to a tank that is very different from their preferred parameters. Much like the sparkling gourami, whereas the other variations of the dwarf gourami, as well as the honey gourami, I have found to be very much more accommodating when it comes to tank styles. Luckily though, while that sounds like the powder blues are going to be an absolute pain to accommodate, what they really like is actually a tank that is about 50-50 hiding places and open swimming spaces. Which is probably what most fish tanks end up being anyway. Lots of plants and decorations, but also lots of space for fish too. And so though, if you're setting up a brand new tank and you're waiting for plants to grow in in order to provide that cover, then it's better to wait until they've done so before you buy any of the powder blues just so that they have that cover available to them from the beginning. In very bare tanks they can be rather shy and will quickly dart away whenever they see movement outside of the tank, which can be a little bit frustrating when all you want to do is watch your fish and you weren't thinking about eating them. But even when you think you have set up that tank just perfect for them, this is a species that shows a great deal of personality between individual fish, with some being far more adventurous than others, and so you may well find that you have just bought a rather shy gourami who likes more cover in its tank than another gourami might have done, for example. In fact, powder blues are a bit like betters or apistos when it comes to personality type. They can vary wildly between fish, and it really is a case of buying the fish and then just seeing what kind of temperament they happen to have and working with them. Luckily though, coming from what can be really quite a challenging habitat, Powder blues are very tolerant of a wide range of water parameters. They can happily live in a pH that is anywhere between about 6 and 9, and a temperature anywhere between 20 and 28. They are not fussy in the slightest. The only thing they are a little bit more picky about is water current. They do not like a strong flow. Their body shape really isn't the most hydrodynamic. So long as the flow is nice and gentle though, or if the water is still, then they are perfectly fine. Now one thing that powder blues certainly benefit from having in their tank is dither fish, preferably ones that are very much smaller than them. So any of the little brave tetras or danios, any of those species that are eternally on the move and generally the sort of thing any nearby predator is going to go to, those are the ideal fish you want to keep in with your gourami. In species only tanks, or ones that don't have open water swimming fish, there might be quarries on the bottom for example, but they don't count, then the gourami can be rather sensitive, tending to slink off into cover when they see movement outside the tank, just in case there are what's on the menu. And while powder blues do like the company of other little fish, they can be rather more aggressive towards each other, especially as they mature and come into breeding age. The males will set up little territories, and they will happily chase away any other gourami that enters their space. This includes gourami of other species, and the females of their own kind, and frankly any other fish that looks even vaguely like a gourami. 
The males will also spar against each other in order to establish boundaries of their territories, but these fights are rarely damaging, although of course if you're keeping your gourami in a small tank, then the constant harassment from each other can make them rather stressed. For this reason, if you're looking to keep a pair of powder blues, then they will be just fine in a 40 litre tank, so long as it's got a base dimensions of at least 40 centimetres. But if you want to keep more than that, then you're going to need to increase the tank size, and again, work with the fish that you have to make sure that they can all get away from each other, and be prepared to take fish back to the shop if bullying starts to get out of hand and the fish are starting to suffer. Powder blue gourami luckily though don't get very large, and the males will max out at around 3.5 inches, while the females are considerably smaller at about 2.5 inches. And they will make use of the entire tank, right from the surface down to the substrate. They are very active hunters, and they will consume pretty much anything from pellets and wafers to live bloodworms and blackworms. And while they are very eager feeders, they are not exactly the fastest fish in the world, so if you're keeping them with other highly active fish like barbs or zebradanios, then you will need to make sure the gourami are actually getting enough to eat and not having every single meal snatched away from them. They can live very comfortably alongside adult neocaridina shrimp, although you won't find many of the shrimplets are going to survive unless you provide them with very dense cover, such as a nice thick moss or something, as the gourami will actively go hunting for them, and they will pick off any shrimplet that they come across. But so long as those shrimplets can find somewhere to hide, and they manage to survive until they're about one centimetre in length, then the gourami will lose interest and they won't try to eat them anymore. Overall though, the powder blue gourami are an easy and hardy species to keep, just so long as you can get that tank set up correctly from them, otherwise they can turn into little bullies. Anywho though, I hope you've enjoyed this little video all about the powder blue gourami. Happy fish keeping everyone, and I will see you again soon. Bye bye!